So after we achieve selective cannulation of the desired duct, either bile duct or pancreatic duct, IV contrast is injected and under x-ray guidance we can get an outline of the biliary tree or pancreatic duct. This x-ray guidance allows us to see any strictures, stones, other lesions that we want to treat. It is very important, particularly in the pancreatic duct, not to over-inject. Over-injection in the pancreatic duct can lead to posterior speed pancreatitis. In the bile duct, however, one can be a little bit more aggressive with injection. When we're preparing a device to use for ERCP, the instrument is flushed with contrast. This is typical IV contrast, which is used in the radiology department, and vials of this contrast are available in the GI department. The, the instrument should be pre-flushed with the contrast so that there's no air bubbles in the system, because we don't want to introduce air bubbles into the duct, which can resemble stones. So when I was a ERCP fellow, we used half-strength contrast uh, in the bile duct, and we used full-strength contrast if we were looking at the pancreatic ducts. The, the rationale behind this was that full-strength contrast in the bile duct could obscure the presence of stones in the bile duct. However, things have changed. We almost never do diagnostic ERCP anymore. If we're going to do an ERCP, we typically are going after a stone, a stricture that was identified with some sort of imaging procedure. Therefore, the use of half-strength contrast is really a relic of the past. And in my opinion, only full-strength contrast should be used. The reason for this is that if I'm intending on going for the bile duct, I want to know that that duct is being opacified. And I may not see that right away if I'm using half-strength contrast. So even though half-strength contrast has a long history of use in ERCP, I think it's old history and I don't think it should be used anymore.